find this? G after. G after. I think. I is G after 2. I is G after 2. G after. Chapter 2, starting in verse 11. Verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly righteous and godly in the present age. I'm sorry, I thought everyone was there already. <laughs> Spit it out, boy. And then verse 13. Still can't find that in the Titus chapter 2. Verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. There's a reason why I read that, and I'll tell you in a moment. So let's pray. Our Father, thank you. You've redeemed us. Your grace has come to redeem us. We need redemption. We're sinners. In our sinfulness and our selfishness and our arrogance and our um, thinking of our own ways, our worldly desires. Thank you that you, you broke into that. And there is grace and mercy and, and there's a change of a heart so we would love you. Pray that you use me to encourage us from your word. Bless you embrace the masculinity and the femininity that you have described in the scriptures. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. God's good design. He's the creator. And there's a good design reference to men. The male headship. <clears throat> and they had authority and headship. Right. Headship, which describes it. Men have authority and Responsibility. That's an and. You know, what is that called? An ampersand. What? Ampersand. ampersand. Yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> what she says. <laughs> See. Female submission. <coughs> what was her role? Helper. 
Rebellion. Helper. <laughs> Not originally. <laughs> Companion. Slap. Oops, not slapper. Companion. <laughs> You know, we can upgrade to a whiteboard with spell check. <laughs> Companion helper. That's what she was. No slapping. <laughs> Male headship, authority, and responsibility. Female submission. Excuse me. <clears throat> She's a companion helper. But in reference to both sexes, Quality with you. Any equal. You can hear? No, I can't hear. What? <laughs> <laughs> then what happens? The fall. Fall oh, takes place. What is about? Hey, hey, hey. Don't get too uh. excited. Right here. She's inside of that? Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Dropping her all over the place. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So the fall brought what? I so it starts with a D. Yeah. Discord. 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 Distortion. Which bring which brought Discord. The male. What's his tendency? Passivity. Or? Me. Abusive. <laughs> Abusive or passive. Thus the need for slaps. Female. This is something. No slapping, Suzanne. <laughs> I saw you raise your hand. That's cool. <clears throat> Female. Domineering slaps, domineering control. Woody, manipulation. Manipulation. Woody. <laughs> 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 but the, mani <clears throat> the manipulation, that's a form of control. That's the way they use control. That's the way they manipulate things. It's that way you would do things the way I want you to do things. So there was a distortion of the rules, but then there's also a distortion of the identity, which led to what? Yes. yes. Here's a separation, and then there's another separation, and we want to try to get back to this. How do we do that? gospel is the thing that's going to drive us back. 
This is how you have This is how you have gender recovery. <clears throat> because this is why we read one person in Titus chapter 2 instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, what's the problem that we have now due to the distortion of fall? Desires are corrupted. Here's a reference to our desires, which comes from bad heart. Bad heart. So this needs to be changed. That's what we have in your heart. We're sick, we're distorted, we have radical depravity. Um, but Jesus and his redeeming work for sinners can save us. We deserve God's judgment, we deserve God's just judgment. But Jesus can heal our brokenness. Jesus tra can transform our fallen thoughts, our fallen attitudes, our fallen habits, our fallen, our evil desires, because he changes the heart. So we must entrust ourselves fully into, trust, entrust ourselves fully to Jesus. Seeing that he lived where we failed, he died in the place of sinners as a substitute, he resurrected. So he conquered death, sin, and hell. He conquered those things. And that's why when we read from Titus chapter 2, God's grace has appeared. And this is salvation. Anybody can embrace the gospel. But this gospel is not simply here. It instructs us, it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live lives, as it says, that are sensible, that are righteous, that are godly. And he was given over for us, in verse 14, so he might redeem us so we can go do whatever we want. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's not in the American Standard. Maybe that's in the King James Version. No, I'm just kidding. He might redeem us forever from every lawless deed. And then notice, that's the negative. The positive, to purify for himself a people for his own possession. So there's putting off and putting on. So that this is changed to a new heart. So now, now we're able to put off these wrong desires. Put on a new. Now, why would I put wrong in parentheses like that? That would probably help if I turn it on. Ah, there you go. Why would I put um, wrong in parentheses like that? Well, because not all desires are wrong. Yes, not all desires are wrong. Just what you do with those <clears throat> desires. <clears throat> so put off these desires and to put on the new. So we must yield our lives to Christ. And so what happens is we embrace the teaching and the instruction of what? Scripture. The scriptures. The God's word. The truth. That's how, notice um, a passage we did not read, but in Ephesians chapter 4, you put off the old self, mm -hmm. corrupted in the lust of deceit, and then you renew your, your mind. You renew your mind with scripture.
scripture, right? So by embracing God's word, the instruction, teaching of God's word, and then we put into practice what he's revealed, we begin to recover. There's a gospel, <clears throat> there's a gospel recovery, there's a gender recovery coming from a new heart, so it can bring us back to how this is supposed to be functioning. So we're functioning within God's good design as our creator. What's his design? Male headship, authority and responsibility, female submission. Or she's a companion, a companion helper. Understand that they're both equal. This is how God intended us to live, how God intended us to be. Now, so today, what do I do with that? Oh, oh yeah, okay, I guess I can do that. Now we can say, Embracing masculinity and femininity. Did I spell that right? Femininity? Femin femininity. 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 So young, pretty bad. <laughs> what would be a what would be the world's version of being masculine? Rambo. <laughs> Charlton Heston. Frank Eastwood. Eastwood. Okay. So now let's come to the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of date. We don't know. The ex governor of uh, California. He yeah, used to that's be. the one I was I'm thinking. I'm the one I think the queen must be found at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold, show Schwarz muscles. Schwarzenegger. I mean, guns. Rock on the bench press, man. Yeah, bench <laughs> like <laughs> muscles. He's Adrian. working out, right? He's doing this and that. That's, that's masculine, man. <laughs> you, you kindergarten teacher. My kindergarten teacher. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now you know what that means, okay? That's a good point. So, what we mean by being masculine at first, we're going to talk about. I'll write this down. Traits and qualities. Traits and qualities that grow out of how men are created and designed. So there's traits and qualities that grow out of how men are created and designed. So if they're, if these are, excuse me, traits and qualities of how men are designed, where are you going to find that? The scriptures. You're not going to find it from the world. And so how are men created? How are they designed? Ephesians about needed to God. 
Yes, in the image of God, true. Right, God. Right? <clears throat> the answer's already on the board for you. Uh -huh. Authority and responsibility. Okay, so there's headship. Which means authority and responsibility. So, what does this all entail? Then? What does this all mean? It takes Loving initiative. I'm calling to take loving initiative. <clears throat> Focus on the work that God has put before him in the world. Now we're going to unpack this, his work, and what does it mean? So if he's taking loving leadership, excuse me, loving initiative. It means, brings up three aspects. First, men should be leading. Second, men should be providing. And what do you think the third one is? Protect. Yes. Men should be protecting. This is... This is how the scriptures describe men. This is how they're supposed to be. And if we took the time, and you can take the time this week, or the next couple weeks, and you'll see the opposite of that. In the garden, Genesis 3, in the fall, mm -hmm. Adam was not leading. Adam was not providing. Adam was not protecting. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll take some. You know, he wasn't even paying attention. Well, maybe he was sitting there like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. He was not protecting. He was not leading. He was not providing. So you see the opposite of those things. John Piper says this, at the heart of mature masculinity is a sense of benevolent responsibility to lead, provide for, and protect. So, that's why that's first the loving initiative because these things are done excuse me <clears throat> in kindness. Okay, so what what would um, we're talking about doing things in kindness, benevolence, loving initiative. What would that look like? I mean, what are some practical examples of what that looks like or what that doesn't look like? Negative or positive examples? Are you making decisions about money? <laughs> okay. Now, again, I'm talking about you're talking about leading, I'm talking about in reference to kindness, loving kindness. So you have money decisions here. Um, how, what would loving initiative, what would kindness, what would benevolence look like? In the money decisions? In the money decisions. We talk over the needs of the family and you come up with a budget and and you both agree on it, and uh, so looking at needs, right? Looking at needs. Uh, how about not walking in fear, trusting God in it, not being selfish in that. Yeah. So that's that's kindness. That's loving. Good. I know. How does that? What does it look like? How does it look like? Now, what does it look like? If we're talking about leading in love, we're talking about loving, benevolence, we're talking about kindness. 
what would that, here, let me give you another example. Um, harsh commanding tone. Yeah, yelling all the time. Harsh tone. Yelling all the time, being, using that as discipline or punishment or something. That's what kindness looks like. Well, I said <laughs> kindness, in terms of what, what does it look like or what does it not look like? Okay. Positives and negatives. So you, you've given me, here's positives. It's looking at the needs, not being selfish. Here's negatives. There's harsh tone, yelling. Um, a, another negative, unwillingness to consider the opinions of others. Opposite of that is looking at the needs and thinking about the needs of others, right? Initiative, shorten that up, or initiate, what does it mean to initiate? Start it up. Start to move. Yeah. Not being compelled by anybody else. And you're seeing what? You're not compelled by anybody else. You're seeing need. something you need. need. Something you need. So there's a way for you to lead. There's a way for you to provide. provide. There's a way that I can protect. The difficulty is sometimes men they they see these things and they get too strong or they get too soft in that. So they need to put off and put on. But there's a way for them to show their authority and responsibility. They're initiating. So in all this, for men to embrace this. Um, uh, for men to embrace this, we see this a lot in scripture. We need to be strong. Strength. <clears throat> men must cultivate strength. Must be strong. And also to seek God's guidance. <clears throat> How do they exemplify this? Strength. In what areas of their lives? First, my mom brought up one. Spiritual areas. In other words, their self discipline, their self denial. <clears throat> so, spiritually, what other ways must men show strength? I don't think a woman should be, can we pray now together? Say, I'm sorry, say it again. I don't think a woman should say, can we pray now together? Oh, so he's taking that leadership? Okay, good. Yeah. That's good. Opening jars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and killing bugs. Those are two main, you know. Snakes. Killing bugs. Emotional. Emotionally. There's bravery, there's courage, um, there's strength there. I mean, there's even an aspect of encouraging, yeah. Physical. Mm -hmm. Not being lazy. Not being lazy physically, but also not being lazy mentally. mentally. Reading, studying, involving, engaging. Those are ways for men to be strong. They should be strong spiritually, strong emotionally, strong physically, strong mentally. So that they're able to provide sound leadership and sound provision and sound protection. 
know, I think that's what you gave Peggy is very, 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 very practical. You want to talk about something that's very, very practical. Why is it that women initiate prayer? Now, let me ask you a question now. Is it bad for women to initiate prayer? No. Uh, well, I know. No, no, no. Not necessarily. It's not necessarily bad for women to do that. But it is if they're taking the responsibility of the husband and saying, yes, they're doing the meeting. Yeah, exactly. That's when it becomes inappropriate. Or when it's a, in a situation like that, a situation where there's a group, why aren't the men stepping up and taking leadership of that? Why aren't the men saying, let me, uh, I'm going to pray for I'm going to do, I'm going to, remember it's this word right here. Initiate. No, you know why? It's tradition from the fall. <laughs> and, and that's the default. It's easier that way for men to just go back to here, here, Passive or being abusive. It's interesting. You know, Mark Driscoll's put out a lot of material on this subject. Good listening in. On on this part right here. On leadership. On, on men leadership. Masculinity. Mm -hmm. That's kind of one of his things. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Pastor Mark Driscoll. Washington. Pastor in Seattle, Washington. Sovereign grace, kind of thing. No, you're not sovereign grace. Isn't it? No. Well, look at a couple of passages here in Titus. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Somebody read verses 13 and 14. One Corinthians. <clears throat> be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Good. Good. A couple passages for you. Act like men. Be men, literally. Be quick like men. Be strong. And then notice the next verse. Let all that you do be done in love. That's good. Another passage more. Actually, practical outworking of this. I put up there 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 10. <clears throat> Joab saw that the battle was set against him in front and rear. He selected from all the choice men of Israel and arrayed them against the Arameans. But the remainder of the people he placed in the hand of Abishai, his brother, and arrayed them against the sons of Ammon. And he said, If the Arameans are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the sons of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. I love this verse 12. Be strong, and let us show ourselves courageous for the sake of our people and for the cities of our God, and may the Lord do what is good in his sight. Now that's being a man. This is what we're going to do. Here's a plan. Here's a strategy. We're going to lead. We're going to have provision. And if you're lacking, I'm going to help you. If I'm lacking, you help me. We're going to have protection. And let's do this for our, the people of God. And let's do this for the glory of God. And then you know what? Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. We'll let it in God's hands. That's, that's good. That, that's a great passage for us. So men must be strong and courageous. Strength is needed to take right responsibility to, to initiate leadership and provision and protection. When men pull back and are not given leadership, that's not right. That's wrong. Or men are too strong. They have to pull back a little bit and just show kindness. That's why loving initiation is together. a short illustration. John Harper, he was a Scottish minister, was invited to preach at Moody Church in Chicago. 
for three months. Uh, he boarded a ship for America with a six-year-old daughter, and the ship was the Titanic. You heard the story? Mm -hmm. Titanic struck by us. Struck an iceberg. Uh, the ship began to sink. Harper put his daughter in a lifeboat, and after kissing her goodbye, he turned back to help the others. He courageously encouraged other men to be men, as he shouted, women and children and unsafe to the lifeboats. He removed his own life jacket, handed it to another, and reportedly said, I'm not going down, I'm going up. In the frigid water, with 1,528 passengers from the Titanic, Harper swam from person to person sharing the gospel. All but six, all but six of those people died, including John Harper. And one of the six survivor, survivors gave testimony of having been saved as a result of Harper's final witness. There is a man. That's masculinity. Any other thoughts or questions on this? I'm going to erase it because then we're going to look at feminine and femininity. Yeah. Someone always says to me when I want to do it, my husband just won't do it. When we had a friend, Larry White, and he used to say, you know what it takes to make a leader? Someone who will follow. You can only lead as much as people allow you to. You can only lead as much as people will allow you to lead. And, and put that into anything: work, the church, home, school, anything. Men might be called to lead, but it doesn't matter if there's no way for him to lead. That's why it takes both. That's why. There's a headship authority responsibility, but there must be a submission. There must be a, and you're going to look at this with feminine, with women. What's your role? Is to help support that. Support that. Endorse that. Hmm. That's what she should do instead of, well, I'm going to get in front and get out of the way since you're not going to do anything about it. Well, it's real interesting in how this whole thing works together. Is The closer you lead to the ideal, easier it is and the more likely those others are going to be willing to follow. So you're, the way you lead also has something to do with the way people fall. And there's truth on both ends. There must be, there must be loving initiation but there's also the embracing of I'm going to let this person lead. It's, it's, it's tough. Any other thoughts or questions? Good thoughts. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's talk about femininity. Femininity. Traits and qualities, same thing. Traits and qualities. I grow out of how women are created and designed. How were women created and designed? So traits and qualities that grow out of how women are created and designed. How were women created and designed to live? How were they created by God? Well, if they created and designed for males was authority and Responsibility, the created and designed for women must be companion and helper. Right there. 
your submission, a companion helper. I'm going to put a bunch of words up here on the board which will help to give some oomph to this uh, support, assist others around them in accomplishing the tasks that God's put before them. Assist. Help. Encourage. Important word here too, nurture. The work that God has given to men this is interesting. God gave men to work, to lead, to provide, to have protection, to do that. Here's their job, this is what they're called, to take love and initiative, but what did the Lord say? It's not good for the man to be alone, but I will make a helper, helper that's suitable. suitable for him. So, in reference to the work that man has to do, what does this mean? He can't do it on his own. Yes. Man cannot do this on his own. this work alone. He cannot. So the support, the assistance, the encouragement, the help, the hard work of women is essential for the for accomplishing God's work, the work that God has placed before us. It's important. Women are important. Women orient, orient relationships. Helpfulness. Helpfulness. Companionship. They orient, orient relationships toward relationships that are helpful. That's why I put those words, help, assist, encourage, nurture, support. The different words are trying to describe this. And I, I, I gave, we, we gave three words for men where they, they, uh, they lead, they provide, and they protect. We're going to do that with women, but... I wanted to kind of give this, what, what does this look like, companion helper? Uh, she's helping, assisting, supporting, encouraging. She's nurturing. Uh, she orients uh, towards, that toward, toward, toward relationships of, of helpfulness and, 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 uh, and companionship. Piper says this, excuse me, at the heart of mature femininity is a frame disposition to affirm, receive, and nurture strength and leadership. So, what she does, what does this look like? She affirms leadership. Acknowledge, supports the appropriate leadership of others in her life. 
receives. Receives leadership. Receptive, submissive to the appropriate leadership of others in her life. And then nurture. Strength and leadership. She encourages, she promotes strength in others. The appropriate leadership of others in her life and in others as well. Not just affirming leadership in her life, but also trying to affirm that in others. How can I help affirm that person's leadership of, and receive the leadership in my life and in someone else's life and help nurture strength and leadership in other in my own life and in others' lives? How can I do that? That's how she's supporting that. That's how she's encouraging that, nurturing that, helping that, and assisting that, supporting. That's what she's doing. You should be in 1 Corinthians, right? 2 Samuel. Are you in 2 Samuel? 1 oh, Corinthians 16. If you go now forward towards 1 Peter, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 people, 2 people, 2 Peter, 1, 2, 3, John. So go to 1 Peter. First Peter, go to chapter 3. So let me read verses 1 through 6. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by behaving, by the behaving of their wives. As they observe your chaste and respectful behavior, and let not your adornment be merely external, braiding of hair, wearing gold jewelry, or putting on dresses. You say one, two, three, or six? Six, please. Okay. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. Thus so Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. If a woman wants to do all these things very well, what does Peter say are the qualities that she must have? Internal qualities. Gentle and quiet spirit. Gentle. Pure. 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 Purity. So every every wife should call her husband Lord. Is that is that what's okay? <laughs> is that what he's saying? No. No. Not necessarily. It's an attitude. Attitude of. person, the spouse, let's say, we're talking about the wife here, the husband is not leading, is not providing, is not protecting. Maybe he is abusive. Maybe he is passive. Doing those one, two, one of those two extremes, the distortion. 
as a wife able then to do this? Yes. Why? You say yes. Why? How, how is that possible? Because she has a new heart. Ah, oh, she has this. Power of the spirit. Yes. This, this still comes into play because this is the thing. This is why we started here. We start here. It's a great, great question because I get that a lot in biblical counseling. But it doesn't come out like that. I'm going to put it in a nice way. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but normally it comes out with, well, he's not. Well, she's not. But what we just read specifically addresses that particular situation. Because there's still the changing of the heart that God can do in me. Whether my wife responds to this or not, whether my husband responds to this or not, it does not, yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is how the wife should respond. This is how the man should respond. And we respond this way because... I'm out of here. That's it. I'm done. I'm leaving this church. Thanks, Jim. I'm going to have food to support your... Oh, there you go. Support, encouragement. Thank you. Satisfy your frustrations. Um, this is why we start out reading Titus chapter 2. The grace of God is appeared, bringing salvation to all men, denying us, instructing us to deny worldly desires. And he's, he's redeemed us. So we're not committing these lawless deeds, but he's redeemed us. So we're people for his own possession. Good deeds, lawful deeds, glorifying his name deeds. Does that make sense? Great question. Excellent question. Debbie, yeah. When, and whenever I am teaching women in this, out of First uh, Peter 3, I never let them stop at my wife's likewise. You have to go back and see what that likewise is all about, and you go back into First Peter 2, and you have Jesus as an example. Yes. He was submissive, mm -hmm. even though he was treated badly by the, the government and by the Pharisees and you have to go back. In the same way as Jesus did this, so must we. So must the wife. That's good. Now, just to point out, and then we, I'm going to ask questions and our time is done. These are internal qualities. Ward pointed out. It, it doesn't mean that a, a woman should not have a desire to be beautiful and attractive. It doesn't mean that. It's not saying that that's bad. Yeah, they have. Or people interpret that badly. Goes back to the desires. It goes back to desires because that's feminine. I mean, with the long, pretty hair, with the pretty dress type thing, that's feminine. There's something feminine about that. That's good. But what has happened is. What has happened though is what? It's spread out abuse. Well, that. Has become the that that's become the thing. This is being feminine, or yeah, yeah that's a standard, just like the right. the muscle man. And Very good, Judy. That's the thought. Well, this is feminine. This is feminine. This is masculine. Well, th there's there's some truth. You know, there's some truth to the strength with men, and there's some truth to the fact that women should be pretty. He sounds pretty, but. There's the internal qualities, gentle, quiet, purity, submission, respect. Th this will help her to do this well. <clears throat> so now, any last comments or thoughts? Really, I have like five minutes. I want to ask some questions. Everybody write this down. Get this down if you want to write anything. <laughs> so, for us men, what are ways that we can lead? And, and I'm just, it's an open, um, you can think of different things that can be done, whether you're talking about the church, whether you're talking about home, work, where, how can we lead now? Or how can we provide for the needs of others now? How can we protect right now? Let's just write some things down. All right, may I answer that question? All right, may I answer that question? 
starts with a good relationship with the Lord. I mean, devotions and and hearing from the Lord daily through the Word. Rises in the center, right? Yep. Daily. Sharing what he, that, but now I want to specifically how you're going to lead. Sharing what you learn from the word with your family. Oh, okay. So that's what it, that's really when I do that. That's really an encouragement to my family. I don't do it often though. But when I do that, teaching the family. Okay, so there's there's the way of leading. Good. What's another practical way of leading? In church homes, um, school, work. If you have a job and money's getting tight and it's hard to pay the bills and making a decision of whether to get a second job or not. That's practical, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think if you do the first thing that we're daily and it's only going with the second, God will provide. He mm. will protect his own. So, and there's some truth to that, but yet at the same time, if a man sees it, something needs to be done. He's going to do it. Well, yeah. He takes the initiative. That. That's what Michael's saying. Okay, good. What else? <clears throat> Church. Give me things at home and work. Church. Or at home and work. You bring the family to church. Ooh. church, as a man, make sure that any gaps or needs in leadership are filled so that a woman is not tempted to step in. Mm -hmm. That's good. Gaps and needs of leadership in the church. Good. You're putting your stuff away, Sandy. Sandy's ready to go. I'm just putting this away. <laughs> <laughs> what about women? How does one cultivate hopefulness? How can you cultivate hopefulness? Should be encouraging. And how do you do that? In what way? Now, and, and, and the reason why I'm saying that is because and, and, and I understand what you mean. I want to look at practical things, like encouraging. So how, how do you do that? She can give you see him doing time. something well, you tell her. If he's doing something you think is great, you say, hey, that was great. Encouraging the husband to lead family devotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She needs to start out with the word daily, too. That's good. I want to move that. Judy, what were you going to say? To give him the time to be in the word, not to be interrupting him and, and taking oh. his time. Yes, be a listener. Yes. Instead of. <laughs> yeah, but they got twice as many words. But it... I'll tell you, it'd be good for a woman to learn to be silent. That's that's a good thing. When you're cashier and you learn that. <laughs> <laughs> See, you just ran another one. <laughs> that's what happens. Can I? The other biggest thing I hear from women when I'm counseling is, but he won't talk to me. And and we go back a ways in their history and find out that she has stepped on every dream of his, that 
you know, she's treated him more like a mother instead of a wife. Um, she shuts him down, and it's just really important that we listen. I think not only give her husband time, time mommy. not only give her husband time to be in the word, but she should be in the word daily too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which again, and I, I agree with that. It's here. I'll put it to you this way. There's times where I'm in the word, I'm in prayer for about 30, 40 minutes. And I'm a jerk to my family 10 minutes later. So, you can do all the little ritual type stuff. Yeah, I've seen you. But that's not going to make, that's not going to give, that's going to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, that's going to amount, that's not going to amount to a hill of beans if it doesn't affect the way I'm treating others as well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's why, I mean, it's, it's good, but um, that's what I'm talking about. What's Practical type things, which thank you, Debbie. That, that's very helpful. I think being a listener of his dreams, his thoughts, his desires, respecting him as a, as a husband, as a man, not not his mommy. It's good, and that, that's where both sides can do a lot of self examination constantly. Read, you know, you're in the word, self examination. Those two things should go together. If I can add something here. Sharing his thoughts with her. Mm -hmm. Just talking. That's Treat kind of each other the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now, now it's truth to that, but there's again there's there's also reference to the roles. A man initiating that leadership and a woman coming alongside really helping him to initiate that leadership. That's why I think somebody said Encouraging him to to do devotions for the family. Okay, she's just got to be careful how she does that, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Could be critical. Criticism? What? Why else? Well, she's taking the initiative away from you. She's the one that says you've got to do that. Yes. Um, it's your job. <laughs> Is it wrong when a female takes initiative? No. In her area. Piper says this, which I think is interesting. Mature masculinity does not have to initiate every action, but feels the responsibility to provide a general pattern of initiation. That doesn't mean he has to initiate everything. But he feels that responsibility to provide that pattern of initiation. So that's what could end up happening. Is she's initiating when it could end up really being a criticism against him. That's good. That's good. I wanted to, I know we went a few minutes over, but I want to get some practical ways on how we do this. And I think there's going to be more as we get more into the lesson as well. This gets you thinking, you know, practical ways for men how they do their role, women how they do their role. And what does that mean? That can really transform a church, a home, transform a society, as this really begins to come into play in how we live our lives. I'm going to pray.